So when most people think budget gaming laptop, they imagine a cheap gaming capable laptop that looks super gamer centric like most gaming laptops with that boring but obnoxious red and black color scheme and crazy sharp angles that you could probably use to rob someone on the street with. Well, it looks like Lenovo's decided to take a different direction than the rest with their new Legion Y530. To me, the design language here says, I'm here to work and or study as well as pwn some noobs when or if I find the time. <laughs> I'm the noob in that scenario. Budget friendly or not, definitely smaller and lighter than most gaming laptops and the color scheme totally murdered out with the exception of the small white backlit Legion logo, which I actually think is a really nice touch. It's just a really clean looking laptop. The majority of the IO is located on the rear, which is something I also really dig. It's just so much better to have everything located on the back so you don't have HDMI, USB and power cable shooting out the sides like a goddamn octopus. It's just so much more logical. So we've got a USB-C Gen 1 port, mini display, a USB 3.0, HDMI, network, power port, and a lock slot. And there's also one USB 3.1 port on each side along with a headphones port on the left for some extra connectivity options if you need them. Okay, so it looks good. It's got logical IO placement, but what about the guts? Yeah, for the money, not bad, man. Not bad at all. Popping off the bottom like a can of Pringles gives us access to all the fun bits with the replaceable one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive, 128 gig M.2 NVMe drive, eight gigs of RAM, which is upgradable to 32 gigs, and the Wi-Fi card, which I believe can be replaced too. It's nice to see this many replaceable parts. This way, as your budget allows, you can slowly upgrade your system to suit your changing needs a bit. Kind of like a gold digger. Melania Trump, <coughs> excuse me. So Lenovo claims a 52 and a half watt hour battery is gonna give you five hours of usage, but in the real world, my testing turned up with about four to four and a half hours with normal usage and brightness at about 40 to 50%. The 15 inch full HD IPS display has nice thin bezels, which is great to see and just a nice change from the typical thick black walls we normally see on gaming laptops and gets bright enough at a max of 250 nits, but falls short on color accuracy at 66% sRGB as proven by my good friend Matt Moniz in his review, which I'll link down below. So you should go check that out too. Does that matter a ton while gaming? Well, while I prefer to have the best color accuracy possible, it doesn't matter as much as if you wanted to do any serious photo or video editing. So I think for the vast majority of people, it's a totally acceptable display. The keyboard's pretty great. It's full size. The keys have a sort of rubbery feel to them. They've got great space in between them. They've got a great travel distance of 1.7 millimeters and they're backlit. And even though you can't change the colors or zones, at least they're not the typical played out gamer red. The touchpad's great too. It's using Microsoft Precision drivers. It's fast, it's accurate. It's a no bullshit touchpad that just works. The speakers are located on the front, but are downward facing and they sound like pretty much every other laptop speakers. They're okay, they'll get the job done, but if you're wanting a quality audio experience, just use some headphones. So my review unit configuration came with an Intel i5 8300H, eight gigs of RAM and a GTX 1050 Ti, but you can easily upgrade to the i7 8750H configuration for only a hundred bucks more, which I think gives the best value for your money. But with my config, overall performance has been pretty good. Yeah, at max load, CPU temps do get up to 93 degrees Celsius, and it does throttle a bit, but I never noticed any meaningful frame drops. And even with the fan spinning at max, it's still way quieter than most, and at idle, it's as quiet as Bill Cosby while sneaking some sleepy dumb pills to some unsuspecting women. <laughs> Oh uh, shit. But as long as you're not expecting to play AAA titles at maxed out graphics settings, like you're rocking some ridiculous 30 pound gaming laptop with a bloody GTX 1080 in it that nobody can afford, you're gonna have a great time with some good FPS numbers and no noticeable frame drops. So at the end of the day, starting at $730, I think it's an excellent value. I love how it's got an understated look to it. The keyboard's fantastic to type on. The display is great, even though it doesn't have professional qualities to it. Battery life's on par for the course and the performance should be more than enough for who this product is targeted towards. Although I would recommend spending that extra hundred bucks to upgrade to the i7 8750H CPU configuration over and above my review unit, which is currently priced at 900. But that about does it for this one. Uh, as always, I'll be chilling in the comments for a bit. So stop by and say hi or ask some questions and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week, but thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.